So, greetings all. This is Amritanshu Vajpayee on behalf of Team Ice Team. After an eventful first day, that is 1st of October 2023, under this program of Lunar Nights, I welcome all the people, all the participants, students, teachers, guardians, and all the astronomy enthusiasts all around the globe to this second day proceedings of Lunar Nights under the patronage of ICE team. I take this opportunity to welcome all the people on board today, especially from team ICE team. A couple of them shall be interacting with you all. As we know, Bonnie Thruber, ma'am, who is the director ICE team and the brain behind this entire program. Welcome, Bonnie, ma'am. Bonnie, ma'am, shall be taking you to a ride of cultural astronomy while she will be discussing the padlets, the updations that have been made in a course of 24 hours since we met yesterday. I also welcome Shri Mr. Suresh Meduruji, who is a teacher from ZPHS Nunha School from the state of Andhra Pradesh, or in fact, that we say province of Andhra Pradesh in India. He is an astronomy enthusiast, an amateur astronomer who has got good command over, you can say, astronomical concepts, especially not only at those communicative level, but has got a very deep uh, astronomical thought process at the outreach and at the cultural astronomical level. Suresh, sir, shall be taking us all to an interesting ride on two important concepts. First one that I mentioned yesterday, that while we are expanding the domains of the horizon of our thought process, from our eyes to cameras, to telescopes, to robotic telescopes. So there is a special facility of micro observatory on NASA's robotic telescope. So Suresh, sir, shall be guiding you today on how to take the uh, images by using uh, NASA's micro observatory telescope and the rest of the process that how to make those images look beautiful shall follow tomorrow. So, and apart from that, Suresh sir shall also be discussing with regards to uh, one important concept taking cultural astronomy because today's theme that we are thematically linking everything in the terms of cultural astronomy so he shall be taking, you can say, taking all of us to a little bit of shared cultural experiences from his point of view. Welcome, Suresh, sir. And last, but you can say the old culprit, Amritanshu Vajpayee, is in front of you. So we shall begin the session of the day today with me. I shall be boring you for next 20 more minutes, taking you to the one of the most important experiences that you need to know as far as the observations are concerned. Yesterday, as if you remember, when we began this entire process of ice team lunar nights, and I was giving you a small presentation on mobile astronomy, you remember what I said. One of the important things that I mentioned yesterday was that to make friends with the sky that you should make friends with the sky, you should get used to, to the sky. So today we shall be discussing that how to make friends with the sky. Because if you go out, you should know that, okay, that's definitely you are having, see this mobile phone, as you can see in my hand, you are having this as a tool. You might be having a DSLR camera, or if you are, you can say more well off, you might have a telescope or an access to the robotic telescope as well depends upon the circumstances and the places you come from. But definitely one thing has to be common. You need to be friends with the sky. And I as always mention that books definitely are your best friends. Books are the best friends of human beings. But sky definitely is even better than that best friend. Because to befriend a book, you need to open the leaf or the pages of the book. You need to turn down the leaves of the book. But to make friends with the sky, you just have to look up. Whether it's day or night, it always, it never disappoints you. Even if the sky may be cloudy as it is now in many Asiatic regions because of the returning monsoons. But if you look at the sky, I promise you, I guarantee you that you might end up in looking up that particular formation of the clouds that you may have never seen before and you may never see again. 
So all these circumstances lead to Sky being one of the best of the best friends of yours. So today we shall, uh, you can say, have a little bit of roller coaster ride via this platform of Stellarium software. Pardon me, as there is no electricity at my place, so I might be sweating. So the uh, so what I am just going to do is I am just going to share my screen, and I shall continue for a couple of more slides that we started in that presentation yesterday. So I hope that this screen becomes visible to you. Is this visible to you? Anybody can say. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And I will humbly yeah. request. You, I would humbly request all the honorable participants, teachers, especially the students, the young dynamic audience of the day. Please try to keep yourself at mute because this is one of the crucial. Oh, sorry. This is one of the crucial points that we have to be discussing today. So this was the point where we stopped yesterday. The cheat sheet that how you can uh, cheat with regards to the nighttime sky. But there is one more important thing that we can look into. If you look up into the sky, this is a screenshot taken from Stellarium software, courtesy to the uh, website that I have mentioned. What is this actually? There is, these are, you can say, this is a screenshot taken from the Stellarium software that we shall be discussing today, not to the fullest extent, but only in the context of making the sky map. But you can see, you can read out the names. Kesopias W, you can see, Little Dipper, Big Dipper, Cigar Like a Thing, Teapot is there, Fish Hook, Northern Cross, Summer Triangle, Head of Serpent, etc. Interesting names. So what actually they are? What happens is they fall into the category of asterisms, which are formed by a combination of the stars of one or more constellations. And I'm not going into the details of the definitions of the constellations and asterisms, but you know, these are a few interesting features that can help you make friends with the sky. When you go out, as per the season, you can look into it. And they definitely announce when you look into this particular star they, or the combination of this star, they definitely around, announce to you the advent or the arrival or you can say the what the ongoing season is. For instance, in the summer, you will find Arcturus, a combination of three stars, Arcturus in the Bootis, Boots constellation, Spica in Virgo and Regulus in Leo. In India, Leo means Singarashi. I will not be referring to Indian names right now because this entire pursuit is at the level of, you can say, uh, uh, popularizing the things beyond the boundaries of the nation. So you can just look into, you can Google with the help of Professor Google, as I mentioned yesterday, the biggest teacher of the day or of the century or millennia, what, what can be said. You can find out the local colloquial references in your uh, particular uh, uh, culture that you come from. So when you make a combination of these three stars, you find a very interesting triangle up into the sky. That is the summer season. Then, uh, that, sorry, that is the spring triangle. That is the advent of the spring. Then I am bypassing the diamond of Virgo. You can look into it. But the second important thing that we do encounter is the summer triangle, Vega in constellation Lyra, Altair, in Aquila and Deneb, the star. They, the first one is the star and second is the constellation. Deneb in Cygnus, Cygnus the swan. So if you combine these three, in these three constellations, in the nights, you will find another interesting triangle that is known as the summer triangle. Similarly, the upcoming season, which is just knocking on your doors, the winter, it has got two peculiar asterisms. The one is winter triangle, which comprises of Betelgeuse, Betelgeuse in the Orion. Orion appears like a hunter that we study in our classrooms. You just go up into the sky and look like, look into a pattern of the stars, hunter type of a thing, hunting down something. I am not telling what it hunts down. You look up there. Best part is observing and learning by yourself. Sirius as a star in Canis Major and Procyon in Canis Minor. Combine the two, you again form a triangle. This is when winter knocks on your door. 
when winter goes more deep you will find a hexagon that is a six shaped structure that is a structure of almost six lines regal in orion aldebaran in taurus capella in auriga pollux in gemini procyon in canis minor and sirius in canis major so if you combine all these six stars from these different constellations you definitely are going to find a hexagon type of a thing and that will be winter at its pristine glory so you know what is the reason for me to put up all these things in front of you or in fact to show you this type of a figure to make you fall in love with the night sky and not only this you can see there are even within the constellation there are constellation based asterisms also the recognizable features for example orion or hunter is coming up into the night sky you can look at the belt of the orion that is orion's belt in sagittarius if you can see there is a teapot type of a thing in sagittarius saptarishi in the indian context or you can say arsa major in uh, in english language that we say in western from the western terminology it appears like a cigar so big cigar and small cigar that i always say associated with the polaris so then comes scorpius then a northern cross in the cygnus and in fact the people are joining from brazil so i have definitely put southern cross in crux constellation so all these star patterns you can find up when you are looking up into the deep dark skies and you know what happens is i just wanted to ignite a flame in you it will help you to understand what can be one of those neglected features of the night sky something which is known as light pollution when we talk of pollution we treat sound pollution we treat uh, you can say air pollution then definitely soil pollution is there and all type of pollutions we talk about but one pollution that goes unheard of is the light pollution so you need clear skies to find oneness with the nature to fall in love with the sky so we will understand the importance of clear dark skies as against the bright lights that are protruding up into the sky which inhibit your vision to make friends with the sky so definitely a lot of things that need to be taken care of for you to understand all these features and these are you can say a few of the things that constitute all those things and definitely this is not the last and this is not the first everything in science as i always mention is second but last even all the theories of the science that are prevalent in the modern world they are second but last something will come to improve upon so definitely this presentation that i am giving you is not the ultimate presentation there are a lot of features which i have not included which can be included so this was you can say a little bit of thing that i wanted to guide you to but towards the night sky and now coming directly to this software part of the thing that how can we make all these important things up into the night sky because you know when i told friends with the night sky you must know what is there up into the night sky so one of the open source softwares that is available to all of us open source in the sense that we do not have to pay for it as a student as a young student we can utilize it definitely the paid version of this software is available in the mobiles especially if uh, you want you can if you want to spend a little bit of money say of the order of two or i think four or five dollars uh, you might be able to uh, purchase it in indian context it has 250 rupees so that is the cost of I, i am forgetting the exact amount for the paid version of this stellarium but in the computers in the laptops in your systems it definitely is free of cost so you can download it and the important part why i included this is because this is a cross platform software you can see as i annotate it in front of you this is available for linux this is available for macbook this is available for windows and this is on the web as well it has got a portable version as well so all this make this stellarium as a very important get to do features if you want to master or if you want to befriend befriend is the proper word in today's context especially for the young friends who are joining me the night sky 
So it provides you a lot of things. You can go into the features. You can explore all the features. But definitely, once you are installed, I am running a Windows machine. So I am using utilizing this in context of the Windows. But if you want tomorrow or later, we can discuss, uh, have a couple of minutes discussion over the mobile uh, implementation of this Stellarium software as well. So this helps you make friends with the sky. So once this Stellarium is installed, it is launched. I hope that you are able to see me, see my screen. So what it does is it presents to you a, this sort of view, taking a location. So first of all, we what is the aim that we are looking at today? Today, we definitely are aiming at making a star chart. That's how the night sky looks out, looks uh, out to you when you go out, either in your balcony or on your terrace or into your gardens or near a riverside or a seashore, beach, whatever it is, from wherever you want to observe it, how it looks like. So first of all, this needs to be set as per your location. Uh, are you able to see this Stellarium screen that I am sharing? Can anybody say? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yes, sir. sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So, you know, what happens is a lot of you might have used this platform, might be used to it. It may be a little boring for you. But this session especially is oriented at the, you can say, the educators in the beginning. Or you can say the amateur astronomers, especially the young students of tender teenage so that they can develop enthusiasm and interest up into the sky. So what happens is you can see as I hold my mouse left click and I move this from left to right, this entire screen is moving a little bit. So this screen is moving and what can be you can see, you can see a lot of directions scrolling from left to right. Is the screen moving in front of you or is it only moving in front of my screen? No, sir, screen is not moving. Screen is not moving. What is happening? Let me try to share it again. Because I was not finding it moving. What I am doing is, so what I shall do is, let me just put that web version of Stellarium. That will help all the people. So, what I am going to do is, I am going to open Stellarium web. Okay, so this is a little bit in a restricted mode, but definitely it will help us. So now I am sharing this screen again. So are you able to see this screen now? This screen are you able to see, I hope. This web screen. Okay, so you know what happens is, as you see in front of my screen, whatever I am sharing, this complete screen I am sharing now. So you know, this is the web version of this particular Stellarium. And so this has got a unique advantage of it also. So as I was talking in the beginning, that what you have to do, you need to make friends with the sky. And to make friends with the sky, you need to understand a few important things, a few important concepts as well. If you can see at the bottom version, there is something known as horizon that beyond which you cannot see. That this is our horizon that I am annotating. And beyond this, whatever it is, beyond the ground, we are not able to see. Now I made this green in color. And whatever is below this, it has set up into the sky. And whatever, whatever is above it, we are able to see up into the sky. So, you know, what can really be done is, first of all, we need to try to make a view out of it so that we are able to see this entire sky in a single go. And before that, we need to set our location as well. Now, how to set the location in particular? If you see at this bottom point, at the bottom left corner, there is something known as near New Delhi, because this is the location that this particular software has taken up. So you can browse into it. You can change this location from near New Delhi to a particular place on this map. Say, for example, let me just change it to Chicago. So 
now again what has happened yes so now i am using this location and the moment you see chicago what happens is you see bright flash of daytime because right now it is morning time or in fact uh, you can say early morning not so early also in chicago are you able to see this screen or there is a little bit of lag in the sharing are you able to see this chicago uh, this sky okay yes sir you yeah, sure so uh, okay so there may be a little bit of internet connectivity problem from my part so you know what happens is in chicago it's the day time so now what you need to do is you need to set up this particular thing at the point of time when you want to observe so first of all you know what we are going to do is with holding the mouse the left click of the mouse we are making a little bit of a circular sort of a thing then we are zooming out such that the cardinal point of the north is up because we are used to seeing north up so in this manner we have set up this entire thing this is the chicago sky at the current time now you see at the bottom right corner at the bottom right corner is the date and the time so for example if you are planning out for a night time sky observation session say at uh, i think at 9 uh, o'clock in the evening on 2nd of october so you click over it and you choose the date and time so let me it is 2nd of october so what i am just going to do is i am just going to make it a little bit darker so here it comes in the time of the chicago here it comes at the chicago what happens is at this particular moment of time because the clock is set in indian terms so it may be little confusing to you so what happens is now this is north up and south down so what can you see there so these are a few of the prominent stars that are available in the night time of chicago or in fact let me change the location that is further better because uh, it will sync me up with that uh, uh, clock that is being set up in my place also so let me put it new delhi again the location where it was previously so i am using this new delhi location and new delhi location what i am doing is i have i want to use it for 21 hours so let me go back in time you can go back and forth in time so i am manually doing it for 2nd of october at 21 hours so here i am i am freezing the time also i am stopping the time so you must decide the time and freeze the time so here it is i am using it like this exactly i am making it to 22 hours that is 10 pm in the night and so it is at 10 o'clock in the night this is with regards to the particular place of delhi how you see the star now if you go out you are able to identify a few things into the night time night sky of delhi that you will find this star of vega you will find this saturn you will find jupiter into the night sky you will find moon and uranus into the night sky now the important fact that i wanted to bring in front of your eye in front of you is that how you are able to identify which portion and all those things now which portion of the sky all these things they will be available at that really can be understood by the help of this grid lines that we are making so let me just superimpose this azimuthal grid line here or in fact this equatorial grid lines so this equatorial grid lines they are you can say very much in front you can say in our favor for please do not annotate the screen i request you not to annotate the screen now you know these equatorial grid lines they are uh, with regards to this north so you can see the, when this circle is there this is our celestial north or in fact this this is the pole star so from the pole star the lines are being drawn so you really can understand that which is the location at which all our things lie so let me just make it a little bit more proper 
So here this equatorial grid I have chosen. Now from this equatorial grid, if I want to see the constellations that are available into the night sky, I can just click on this constellation things and you see these are the constellations that are available in front of me. And this is the deep sky objects. If I want, I can remove the deep sky objects that are those major objects, etc. All those things that are available up into the night sky. So on 2nd of October at 10 o'clock in the night, what are the prominent things that you are able to see? You are able to see this particular thing. You are able to see Jupiter. You are able to see Uranus. You are able to see the moon. Uranus may not be visible. Definitely is not visible to the naked eye. You are able to see Saturn. So these are the three major, you can say, planets or the celestial bodies that you are able to see. And then in the zodiacal signs, if, if you are aware of something that ecliptic, along the path of the ecliptic, you can see these constellations. This is the Taurus, the Pisces, Aquarius and the Sagittarius. So this green line that I have drawn or in fact, this red line, now let me draw it red because it will provide you more contrasting view. You can see these four major constellations. And if you see that triangle that actually I was talking about, uh, that uh, this, but, uh, this summer triangle, and for this summer triangle, if you remember, Vega was an important part. So one of the stars of that particular summer triangle, Vega, is still available in front of us. You can just go into this detailed features that what all are the other objects which could be available up into the night sky. Yeah, there are definitely different constraints to which, which, which can be limited. But in the search, you definitely can look for any object that you want to look at. But on a major portion, if you want to visualize that whatever ancient people, they had visualized in terms of the constellations, how these constellations look like, why these constellations were named as such you can just click on this constellation art as well. Now, let me just click on the constellation art. Now you see, let me just remove this. Yeah, let me just put the night mode on. Now in this night mode, if you are able to see as this red color comes, so these are that, uh, or let me switch that night mode off. So these are the different ways. If you can see this Taurus, it is definitely, these are the two horns of a bull. Let me just annotate also. These are the two horns of a bull and this is that body and these are the legs of a bull that people had visualized. So right now, if you can see, moon is in the Taurus constellation. Now you can understand, what does that mean? It means that under the backdrop of the Taurus constellation, you can see the moon. Then these are the two fish. That is, if you can see, this is the first fish and then the second fish. So these are the two constellations of the fish that we are able to see. Then comes the Aquarius. If you are able to see this, this sort of a constellation of a man uh, here, this is the hand. And so this is that pot from which the water is flowing out. So Saturn is in that Aquarius constellation. Then definitely the fourth constellation that is available in the night sky is the Sagittarius. And they keep on changing as the time keeps on changing, they keep on shifting in the backdrop of the moving night sky. So if you want to visualize the same night sky at another moment of time, you can just change the time. Or in fact, you can create, you can see the time lapse of how the things are going on. You can just uh, keep, keep them moving, keep them moving on and on and the night sky shall keep on changing. So if you see a little bit time ago, around say seven o'clock, the uh, position of the constellations was a little bit different. If you can see, the Taurus was not available at all. And in the evening time around 7 o'clock, the Scorpius constellation was available. The Ophicius constellation was there on the zodiac belt. Then Saturn was there. The moon had not risen at all. So with regards to the backdrop of the sky, with the help of this small help or small aid, of this particular constellation, uh, sorry, of this particular uh, software of Stellarium, you can work wonders. So now, if you want to make this particular thing going, say if you want to take for 7 o'clock on 2nd of October, what you do is, you can take a screenshot of this, you can save it for your own memory, and then accordingly, you can 
decide on that what you want to see, what all are the things that you want to explore. Now, in that actual software, you can also see uh, even the International Space Station, how you are a, how you are able to see uh, that particular thing moving. Yeah, there are ISS alerts, the Hubble Space, Teles uh, Hubble Space Telescope, HST, when it is there up into the sky, and definitely all the asterisms as well. So this is one important thing. Now, today's as today's theme is cultural astronomy, and I am going to hand over the baton to our uh, Suresh Meduru sir uh, very soon in next five minutes so that he can explain to you uh, how to take the images from NASA's micro observatory, as well as taking the images from uh, this particular thing of, uh, in terms of, uh, sorry, as well as discussing all those important things in terms of uh, what can be said, um, cultural terms. So you know, what really lies in front of us is the night sky. When we see the night sky, these boundaries, whatever that I have discussed, whatever that we have created, they are imaginary in nature. So, you know, what really can be done is, we can even explore our cultural night sky with regards to this, with the help of this Stellarium software. In the actual Stellarium software, you know, what happens is, once you download that software, because I do not know, because of a few connectivity issues, I am not able to present that software in front of you. You know, what really can be done is, we can even change the settings of the night sky. Change the settings of the night sky in the sense that is, we can even make this particular sky uh, in front of us according to our culture, from the cultural backdrop that we come from. Now, if you are able to see this particular background that I have just made in front of you, there is an option which is known as landscape and the star lore. If we are, uh, once you go to this option of star lore, let me just try to share it in front of you again so that this star lore becomes visible to you. I shall try to share it. Now, what happens is, it may be, you can say, a little dizzy to you, but here, towards the left, you can see, you can select whichever culture you come from, and accordingly, you can decide on that from what type of night sky that you are aiming at. For example, if I want, I am from India, I want to have an Indian connect with the night sky, because in the culture of India, the name of the stars, they are different in nature as compared to the Western culture. I want to look at it. I want to explore that particular night sky. I can select this Indian Vedic constellation. So in the in, in Indian Indian Vedic type of a star lore, I can select it and then I will be able to see the constellations, the stars and everything in Indian context. So that definitely is the thing that we can really connect. So what can really be done is this particular thing, uh, what I shall do is, because I was not able to share the screen properly with you, I shall record this Stellarium part, uh, this full-fledged software, I shall record it, and I shall share with all the honorable participants. So, the gist of the talk that I just gave today is, you can really make friends with the sky, courtesy to these software aids, especially this open aid uh, software like Stellarium. You can adjust the cardinal points. Ah, yeah, definitely one thing that I can show to you is, I can show you uh, that particular local sky that how once the night sky is prepared uh, in the local terms, how it looks like from this Stellarium, Stellarium software. I have already saved it somewhere. So let me just take it out. And these are my final couple of minutes in presentation before Suresh sir takes over. I'm just bringing those uh, screenshots that I've taken from Stellarium software for you. Ah, here they are. So that will be, okay. yeah. Uh, I request the people to keep themselves mute and. Uh, <laughs> so I'm sharing the screen. I hope that my screen is visible to you all now. So you know what happens is, 
let me just open it for a certain place like uh, in indian context if you see uh, whether i saved it on yeah indian constellations so i had saved i had saved it here it's just loading up so you can decide on that what type of a backdrop you are coming from yeah it, it is loading up yeah so now this is available as you can see please do not annotate the screen my honorable friends you can do this playful activity at your home but not on the recorded session i humbly request you not to annotate the screen else we will remove you from the meeting so the matter of fact is that you can see this is a screenshot that has been taken from a, a full-fledged installed software. Now, you can see these are the cardinal directions. So you make friends with those cardinal points, north, south, east, west. And apart from that, you can see these other four directions are there, northwest, southwest, southeast, northeast. So this will better help you locate all these things. And apart from that, you can even turn on these grid lines. Again, uh, further directions can be possible. See, west of northwest is also available. North of northwest is also available. So all these subdivisions and subdivisions of the directions are available. Now, these angles are also there. You can see from uh, zero degree uh, at the periphery of this location, this periphery of the earth, we, uh, these all these, they are there. And then you can see the cultural thing that I was referring to. The pole star in Indian context is referred to as Dhruva. So this Dhruva is the pole star. So if you want to observe, connect with your culture, this Stellarium software can help as a, you can say an introductory aid for you to identify the cultural aspects of the different types of the stars, the constellations and the asterisms that are present in front in the sky. For example, this Abhijit, is it is one of the most important part of the lunar mansions or the nakshatra system of the uh, Indian astronomy that you can see that you can observe then definitely the same type of a constellations that are available for example we the Kumbarashi the, that is the Indian name for a constellation that I just was referring to you can just identify from the figure I will not tell you the name that are referred to in, in, in English language, this can help you do the cross-cultural interpretations of the thing. For example, if you come from Western world and you want to look into the Indian form of astronomy, or if you are from India and you want to have a peep out or a glance into the Western form, how the Westerners, they uh, perceive the sky. And not only West as a general, if you want to go into country-specific manner, that how Romanians perceive the sky, how Hungarians have perceived the sky, how Australians, the native Australians, they have perceived the sky, then you can choose that particular uh, form of the sky and you can look into it. That will give you a cultural connect to the sky. And definitely you can go for def all the different things that are related to uh, this observational astronomy courtesy to the end. So with all the hiccups, uh, apologizing you for any problem, uh, in the terms of screen sharing, I am handing over the baton to uh, our Mr. Suresh Meduru. Suresh sir, please carry on uh, with this presentation on how to uh, take the photograph from micro observatory. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Greetings to all. Ma'am, greetings to Bonnie Madam also <coughs> and the children. Dear students, now we are going to, it is an opportunity to take the photographs from micro observatory, which belongs to NASA. We are very much interested to take the photo, use the telescope, or we are very much interested to learn something about telescope. And we are very much about <clears throat> enthusiastic to learn about uh, uh, taking photographs by using telescopes. Now, this is the opportunity for you. Now, this is the opportunity for you to take the photographs by using robotic telescopes of NASA. First of all, you go to Google search engine, type it with micro observatory, micro observatory. <clears throat>
sir it, <coughs> it is taking okay this is the page micro observatory i am clicking on the micro observatory splash page okay here is the page of micro observatory robotic telescope that is it net aagi podama yes this is the page and we have we, we are we are now there are four icons we have to select the observing with nasa this is the icon we have to select i am clicking on the observing with nasa here is the series of tab control telescope project activities training and resources analyze images news and views about microscope micro observatory this is the observatory with nasa page now we are going to control the telescope i am clicking on the control telescope here it is the page of select your target there are so many targets uh, displayed in this page it is moon jupiter jupiter moons venus saturn sun and so much, so many nebulas and are also there in this web page here i am giving you an example for moon if you click on the image you can get the information in regard to moon just now i clicked on moon this is the information if you want more information on moon you can uh, uh, click on this image now we are going to take the photographs of moon by clicking on the part observe here is the page that opened we have two uh, three options here field of view exposure time filter selection we can uh, sell, we are now we are selecting uh, the moon we are instructing the robotic telescope to take the photograph of moon here the first destination for that that means first first one is uh, field of view if you want to get the normal view you have to click on this first, first one or if you want to click on the zoom uh, if you want to get the zoom view you have to click the second part and if you want to uh, get the image of moon in a wide view you have to click on wide view which target you have to uh, you, you want to select click on that view so now we now i am going to click on this uh, field view on just a minute net is slow uh, i now i just clicked on normal view now this is the exposure time this exposure time is uh, different from one one uh, object celestial object to another celestial object because we have to sell, we have to select point 1 se one seconds as as uh, exposure time for moon or for the nearer objects of earth that means jupiter venus if you want to take the photograph of nearer objects you have to select 0.1 seconds robotic telescope adjusted uh, that uh, uh, the time the time that means exposure time it automatically adjusts uh, adjusts with the uh, with 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 our instructions here i selected 1 second that means it it is it is saying that over exposed now i selected for 30 seconds it is also over exposed and i selected for 60 second it is also showing that it is over exposed over exposed means 
you we can see nearer object at the nearer object in at a blink eye that means we can easily see it so it is actually the telescope is also working as a camera it is the telescope uh, camera is working as our eye uh, we can easily see with our eyes we can easily see uh, with uh, naked eye naked eye we can easily see the moon so uh, I, here i am selecting a 0.1 seconds for taking the photograph of moon and uh, the third one is third selection is filter selection here for moon there is no other option with only gray filter option is there so i am selecting this gray filter of option now i am clicking on the button continue continue yes it it goes to another page here it is asking about the in contact information e, uh, email address i am giving my email personal email address to get the image from robotic skill telescope suresh meduru at the rate gmail dot com and uh, it is asking about my age i am between 41 to 65 i selected that one gender i selected male state i am outside us so i selected outside us next from this side uh, how often have you used these telescope so far as i have i used 6 uh, to 10 6 to 10 times so i selected this one the, the people the, the students who belongs to uh, other areas it is, if it is new to you you select it first time today i selected 6 to 10 times now how would you rate your astronomy knowledge on a scale 0 to 10 if 0 is no knowledge at all and 10 is astronomy expert so i selected i am not an expert uh, so i selected 0 here another option is there may we contact you in the future about your micro observatory use so that means micro observatory thing, uh, authorities if they willing to if they are willing to a contact you they will contact you 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 have to give the permission so i selected the uh, put the tick mark to yes now i submit it, i am going to submit my request to get the image of telescope image of moon submit <clears throat> this is the page your request for a telescope image has been submitted is moon our object type is moon distance is 384000 km field of view is normal exposure time is 0.1 seconds filter selection is gray and my email address is sureshmeduru@gmail.com anybody from the class who want to submit their request i will help you uh, please respond anybody from the class uh, suresh sir i would make a humble suggestion to you that if you want uh, you can just extend this thing to uh, this other objects stars and nebula in three sure. color three color sure, observation sure. that will present an alternative sure, view sure. to the picture sure sir sure sir now i am going to uh, uh, again i am repeating the same thing for you to learn more and more and just a minute sir there is a problem with my network sir that is why i am con getting confusion okay <clears throat> now i go to the uh, search engine google i am typing micro observatory this is the first step search micro observatory splash page i am going to micro observatory website it, here it is the website of micro observatory robotic telescope network now i am clicking on the observing with nasa i clicked on it now, now the page is opened at uh, observing with nasa here is a series of uh, icons control telescope projects and activities training and resources 
analyze images, news views and about microscope, micro observatory, sorry. Now I selected uh, this uh, control telescope. I, I click just, I now, just now I clicked on control telescope. The page is now opening. Yeah. Just now I completed the uh, instruction to give the telescope about in regard to moon. It is very near object to earth. Now I am going to submit uh, uh, the request which is far away from earth that is Lagoon Nebula. Now I click on the Lagoon Nebula image. Here is the information about uh, Lagoon Nebula. Oh, just a minute, just a minute. I scroll. Lagoon Nebula. And uh, now I am clicking on the observe button about Lagoon Nebula. Now it is showing three options, field of view, exposure time, filter selection. In uh, While we are selecting the moon, uh, while we are giving instructions to the moon, field of view uh, option shows three options, normal view, wide range, and other thing. But in this, uh, for, for, the, for, for this field, for this uh, uh, instruction, for this object, it is showing a normal value only. That means it is far away from Earth. So it can take the robotic telescope, take the photograph of a normal view only. So I am selecting this normal view. And now I am going to select the exposure time for this. Actually, I already I have already told to you that. Earth is the nearer, nearer ob nearest object and at the same time Lagoon Nebula, it is the far away object from Earth. Now I am giving instruction for 0 0.1 seconds. It is saying that underexposed. Underexposed means uh, in, in a blink of, uh, in a, in a, in a Blink of second. That means in a blink of uh, in a blink of eye, we can't see the lagoon nebula uh, from uh, from our sky. So that means we have to concentrate and we have to open our shutter or eyelid for a time being to take the photograph of lagoon nebula. Uh, now I am going to uh, give the option for one, one second. It is also showing underexposed and again I am giving the third option 30 seconds. It is also showing that it is underexposed. Now I am going to uh, uh, give the option for uh, 60 seconds. <clears throat> now it is showing that optimal exposure time. That means robot telescope automatically adjusts its uh, exposure time for, for learners of uh, telescopic activities. Now, the third option is filter selection. The first one is no filter. The second one is red filter. The third one is green filter. Fourth one is blue filter and uh, multiple filters. We can get only gray, gray image with no filter. We can get a red filter image uh, with red filter and green filter image from green filter and blue filter image from while using blue filter. But when we if we use multiple filters, actually we will get the real image of this Lagoon Nebula. So. I am selecting, I am giving option to give, uh, to, inst uh, to give instruction. I am giving the instruction to multiple filters. Now I am clicking the button continue. Yes, 
it it leads to the page provide your contact information that means in, in email address now i am giving my email address suresh meduru at the rate gmail.com the next one is yes i belong to 41 41 to 65 the next the one is gender male state i i belong to outside us so how often have you used this telescope i use 6 to 10 times how would you rate your astronomy knowledge on a scale of 0 to 10 i am giving it a 0 may we contact you in the future about micro observatory use yes now i am submitting i am submitting the in contact information also here is the request information request for a telescope image has been submitted uh, my target is, is object type is star forming region that means nebula sir nebula belongs to uh, star forming region it is about 4000 light uh, 100 light years and field of view is normal exposure time is 60 seconds and the filter selection is rgb rgb means red green and blue and my email address is sureshmeduru at the rate gmail.com if you uh, sir can i continue with uh, this uh, cultural astronomy also no we can discuss with the padlets and involve bonnie ma'am and then we can continue with it so uh, okay, my, okay, uh, my dear friends actually now we are moving to the third important section thanks suresh sir for this wonderful thing i would request all the honorable members who are here participants to kindly try their luck with nasa's micro observatory try to observe the different features or in fact the different celestial objects that are available up into the night sky and what happens is it generally takes about 24 to 36 hours to provide you the images that you have taken from nasa's observatory by, via email to you you shall be receiving the images on the email to you uh, in the next 24 to 36 hours provided you try taking the image at the moment the moment this uh, meeting gets uh, over today and then apart from that tomorrow we shall be going deep into the fact that how to you can say process these particular images now uh, before we bring the question of the padlet to you actually there was a query Uh, with regards to the how the manual mode really functions so what i have done is because it's getting late we are uh, uh, in the process to overshoot the time so i will not take much only couple of minutes while explaining to you from one of the mobiles how to utilize this particular thing uh, when we are going for all these uh, sort of uh, uh, adjustments so i hope that you are able to see my screen right now the mobile screen on which i have shared so now if you can see this is the table on which i am working and below if you can see there is something these are the different versions of this particular camera that are in front of you one is towards the left there is night then the video is in front of you then as i am uh, scrolling you can see this that is whatever is coming in the yellow portion photo portrait then 60 that these differ from camera to camera so this is a mobile phone that is from realme built so whatever whatever we told yesterday whatever we discussed yesterday uh, you know it is with regards to the mode that i am going to show you so in a few of the modes it is known as manual any few of the cameras it is known as pro mode so depending upon the camera depending upon the smartphone that you are equipped with if it is realme for instance it will show me in this extra it will show me an expert mode that is a pro mode for redmi that is my camera that i use personally it shows me manual mode so it depends that which format of the thing you are seeing at the moment so let me just select this expert 
Now, the moment you select the expert, you see, yesterday we discussed about the exposure triangle. If you remember, so right now, this is a toothbrush that is in front of me. And I just wanted to show to you how we can change with the help of a change of the command. We can change the way in which it is focusing. So, you know, this ISO that we discussed that how much now I am changing this ISO. You see the level of the focus that is changing in front of the screen. As I increase the ISO, see how the change is happening. So when you are on the ground, it is for you to decide how you are utilizing it. Now, the second important factor that is available is the shutter speed. You see, 1 upon 100 of a second. Now, this is 1 upon 75th of a second. You see how dark it has become. It has almost disappeared. So, it will open this shutter for about 1 upon 1000th of a second. I can increase the shutter speed also to 32 seconds. It will take about 32 seconds to for my camera to take this photograph. Then definitely the third thing is white balance. I can adjust the white balance in a few of the cameras. The white balance may be like tungsten, cloudy, like that sort of a thing is there. Or in fact, auto white balance is there. Then this also provides me something known as focusing. It helps me to focus and defocus depending upon the situation. And one important thing that is available in all the mobile cameras is the zoom factor. So you see how much I can zoom. I can zoom if I want to see the bristles of my brush. Definitely, I can go into further details of this toothbrush and 10 times zoom I can see. But definitely in the night sky, depending upon the object that you are actually looking at, like an Orion Nebula, it may take for you about 10 seconds or 5 seconds of focusing. If you are focusing at the Milky Way, it may require you, say, somewhere around 32 seconds. What you do is, what I suggest to you is, operate on the manual mode. Now, for instance, if I'm looking up at this particular portion of this bulb, night time, night bulb. Now, what happens is if I just decrease the shutter speed, you see how it is this incandescent bulb, how it varies. It is appearing so dull, so bright. Now, white balance I change. And then what I do is I am just making it zero. Let me increase the ISO a little bit. Now, what I am just going to do is I am just reducing the shutter speed or increase the shutter speed. You are able to see a little bit. Now I take the photograph. So it has clicked this image in 130th, one of 30th of a second. If I want, I can choose the white. This is a little warmer portion. It will give you a little warmer view. So all these things, they really are possible when you are trying to focus in the night sky. So experiment, experiment with patience and perseverance and definitely you shall meet success. So this was a little bit of an overview into the things that I wanted to show you. And before taking the screen share off, let me show you. This was a type of the image that I got. And this was a night sky image you see that I took yesterday. The stars are visible, prominently visible from this particular thing. And what is the need of a sturdy tripod or a sturdy base? You see, it is taken from a shaky hand. You see the building, how the shake is visible. Now this is taken from a sturdy base. So all the shaky and sturdiness, it definitely, it comes up. You see, the exposure is there. You are able to see the Saturn in the backdrop of the moon. So all these things, they really can be experimented upon, provided you are in the mold to take the risk. So this is what that I just wanted to share with you all. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So I am stopping the share of my screen. So this, this was a part of the query that was being taken up yesterday. So I think because this is one of the important activities because we are experimenting with a mobile phone. So this needs to be taken into account. Now you will see that what is the difference between manual mode and the auto mode or the pro mode, depending upon which camera you operate upon. And you will see how wonderful it is, how you are able to capture. If, if, if in the uh, auto mode, if you go at the moon, whether it is crescent moon, you will get the full moon. I assure you. But in the manual mode, you will be able to observe crescent, gibbous, half moon, first quarter, third quarter, everything you will be able to observe. But definitely you will not be able to observe the new moon. That I assure you. Okay. So with these words, thank you. Thanks a lot. Now I invite uh, for the final session up on the stage, Miss Bonnie Truber. And I am sharing the screen for uh, that can be discussed with regards to the cultural astronomy that we are talking about. Uh, because uh, we are almost moving towards the end of the thing and 
bunny ma'am suresh sir i would request you to kindly unmute yourself so that we can present to the audience who are here that what all has been the progress that has been done by the students since yesterday we started this entire thing bunny ma'am first comment from you before we begin a uh, five minutes of this discussion hello you are muted bunny ma'am quiet so some of the things on this screen that are very important are this image of the in oils it says of a rocket of a moon yes and uh, then there are some comments below it asking about why we pick the colors what's important about these images and uh, Something that I would like many of you to do is actually draw or paint uh, some in images of about your own beliefs of the moon. Now, if you scroll up, no, down, scroll down, there's another very interesting uh, that someone did. Uh, keep going. Right here. This is a, a man headed for the moon. The question I asked is, how did you make the craters on the moon? And the student told me that she got a pencil and used the end. So we had um, a, a short discussion, but these are pieces of art that I think are very important in this. Now, I am going to show you a screen that was done so I'm stopping this screen sharing, and let me see if I can find it. Um, is this it? Ah, well, this is interesting, the way that got cut off. This is from another year, and let's see if I can find the... Uh, Oh, wow, look at the Milky Way and the galaxy uh, system with the named describing the galaxy's appearance on Earth. Uh, when your screen is static, it is not rolling out. It is still in that padlet by Gail Greenwald. Can you see these two padlets? No, only one padlet is available in front of us. That is padlet Gail Greenwald, moon over us. Yeah, only this padlet is there. Let me see. I'm actually, okay, can you see this padlet? Yeah, this, definitely, ma'am. Now it's available. Okay, so Gail was, had her students do some very creative things. She actually teaches poetry. And so she started with an example of a poem in the U.S. Oh, well, here's Moon Navajo's Volleyball. One of her students wrote about it. Yeah. The Navajos are... Western Indians, they live in the Western United States. And it says, we hit the gym each day until it deflates like a Frisbee. It flies and blows away. So I think this is a great description of the um, moon. They hit it back and forth and it gets smaller and smaller. And then it deflates like a Frisbee. It becomes flat and flies away. Mr. Udall is the man in the moon. He pumps up the volleyball full of air and then serves it up to the gym. It hits, that hits it here and there. So that's a poem that she, one of her students wrote. And I think that's a good description of how the moon gets larger and smaller as they're playing volleyball with it. Now let's see, um, as I look down here, there were several other uh, descriptions of the moon. There is a, oh, here's a moon poem. The moon is a mound of snow. As the days go on, the snow melts and melts until the mound is gone. Suddenly winter comes again. Then the beautiful snow falls down. The mound builds and builds until the snow is covering the town. So that was written by someone from her class. Some of these are um, 
they're they're completely creative, just uh, made up rhymes or stories about the moon. But there are also some. Let me see if I can find one. This photograph was taken. These are just some examples that I'd like you to consider. And this one is a longer story. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so this is the moon. It says in Indian culture, and this is Western Indian cult culture, not Eastern. Uh, in the US, the people in this class are considered Eastern and uh, the people who moon in the story, the main character the moon, one of the three children, the star mother, her two older brothers, sun and wind, are always mean. They're always bullying her, chasing her, teasing her, and doing even because the moon felt unloved, sadly, in the sky when exciting things rarely happened. Because of this, it was quite the occasion when thunder and lightning announced a wedding feast. Grand, loud, thunder and lightning were never quiet. Word spread through the air as the kingdom resounded and their rejoicing moon's name was on the guest list as thunder and lightning were charmed by the moon's genie but still, but, but startling beauty. The thing is, thunder and lightning were not too fond of her brothers, sun and wind. Sun was arrogant and, and wind was rough in ways, in his ways. They did invite him through, uh, um, though they didn't. Anyway, this goes on and talks about how the wind blew harshly and tried to get the, the moon to take off his coat and it didn't work. The moon just wrapped his coat around him tighter and tighter so he could stay warm. And then the sun came out and this talks about star mother looked at the sun and said, because of because you thought only of yourself and you turned your back to me, people on earth will turn their backs to you. In summer, you will burn in your own heat and people will wish you would go away. Then she looked at the wind and said, for being so rude to me, your very breath on hot days of summer will shrivel up and, and in winter will shut their doors in your face. At any rate, the sun actually uh, shone down on the, the moon and the moon got warm and so he undid his coat. So essentially, the sun won the argument uh, and um, the, moon, the moon and got the moon to take off his coat where the wind couldn't blow it off. This is from a book called Moon Tales myths of the moon from around the world by ringing a sign. And uh, this is a book that you might want to look at for some stories about the moon. You also have your own stories about the moon that are related to your gods. And using some of those is very important because they're very important to you. So I would go ahead and include some, some things like that. now. Here's a moon drawing. This is a monkey, actually. This is my moon drawing. And actually, I, I think it was supposed to be an astronaut, but I liked it as a monkey. So there are a lot of things that have come out of these uh, padlets. Some very creative things. And I think... Um, 
I'd like to see some very creative things come out of you too. Some poetry. Here's another poem. This is by a famous artist, but it was put there to inspire the students to write stories and poetry. So there are many, many more Padlets. Everyone was expected to do a creative piece on the moon. Uh, and uh, there were some who did draw, some who found coins, um, some who did uh, a variety of things. And uh, this image is from culture, the moon god chases his sister across the sky and sometimes forgets to eat. So um, there are a lot of things you can find besides taking wonderful pictures, which you all have done making your own drawings or writing your stories. This says in Australian culture, Bahu, Balu, the moon wanted a wife. So this goes ahead and talks about Baloo the moon and how he finds his wife. Um, at any rate, there are interesting, very, some very interesting stories and poetry. And what I would like you to do as you're taking pictures of the moon, um, you can also draw pictures. Let's see, uh, does this have a banana in it? There's a picture that I love that's Someone just drew a quarter moon that looked like this is it's not there either, but this has some very interesting items too, and some very beautiful images. I want to show you the banana if I can find it because I fell in love with the banana. I think it's I think it's here. And then there is also someone actually drew the rabbit on the moon, which was, um, so these are all examples. I don't want you to follow the examples. What I want you to do is uh, by thinking, by looking at the moon and just thinking about what you see, what stories you can tell. Um, so they were looking at a waxing crescent and it was this boy, but I can't find the picture, who actually, the waxing crescent to him looked like a banana to me. So that's what he drew. All right, I think that's enough. Does that make sense to you? Write a story, write something that's from your traditional beliefs so we understand them better write um draw pictures like the ones that are already on the padlet and help us learn more about you and your thinking by doing so this is thank you thank you bunny ma'am uh, for sharing the like, yes yeah cultural and references so, um, uh, Bonnie, ma'am, I someone else, like, thank you for your attention. Yeah, so Bonnie, ma'am, I would request you that if you can share the link of these two padlets, a few padlets, so we can share it amongst our participants in the form of an email and we can put it on this particular uh, global padlet of lunar nights. Also, they will get benefited from the ideas that you have just shared. And since now the majority of the population here are uh, the teachers from, you can say they are basically teachers and educators. So I'm, these are my concluding references that I can give. See, for example, as Bonnie Mam has said, she has given a perspective from America that how the people in US, they perceive. Now, if they say, if I am talking in terms of India, I come from India. So I have got a lot of mythological references, whether it's Hindu culture, whether it is Jain culture, whether it is Buddhist culture. So all the sort of cultures, if you are from Middle East, 
then you definitely there is a very rich Islamic culture also, which has got a very good uh, relation in terms of moon and the celestial observations in uh, say in uh, whether it is Russia, whether it is Hungary, whether it's Romania, whether it's uh, Britain, whether it's Australia, all the cultures they have uh, within there are elements within each culture which have very strong links associated with this observational astronomy. They may be in the form of a story. They may be in the form of mythological references. So what, uh, what can be done is we can uh, communicate with our students, we can interact with our students especially and promote them to have a, you can say, talk with their grandparents, have a talk with their chat with their parents and learn from them and narrate their experiences on our padlets. See, this is a cultural astronomy and it will even help us to make the people strike a conversation with the third generation or the second generation because the generation gap is that particular thing that we really are facing at the moment. So it will not only help us build the relations with the sky, but the, uh, but it will also help the families also to bolster the relation because in the such fast world, when everybody is moving and running forward, they will find the grandchildren, will find the time to interact with their grandparents and learn from them, even though astronomy, even though these cultural or mythological references, that will be a wonderful work that we can serve as far as building and strengthening the relations in, in the form of a cultural astronomy. And we can put the, all those things on the padlets. So there are a lot of, you can say, uh, references from, for example, I come from a Indian Hindu culture. So there are references for pole star, there are references for Saptarishi, there is there are references for nine planets. So a lot of references are there. Let all those references come from the students on the Padlet. Let they all come into the public domain. That how, uh, the what is the level of the thought process and the thinking as far as this astronomy is concerned, how deep it is embedded, whether it is Christian culture, whether it is Islamic culture, whether it's Hindu culture, Buddhist culture, Jain culture, Sikh culture, we have got the calendrical systems. Even in the India, we have got Indian national calendar. The government has got its own calendar. We have got a Gregorian calendar. We have got Hijri calendar. We have got uh, the Sikhs have got their own calendar, solar calendar, lunar calendar, lunisolar calendar. All these come from the cultural references. So as an educator, I would request you to promote these queries amongst your students so that their creativity comes out after discussion. Whether it, it can be in the form of a post, as Bonnie Mam showed you, it can be in the form of a painting, it can be in, in the form of a, an article, it can be in the form of a poetry. All those have been given a glimpse of by Bonnie Mam. So with these words, wishing you all luck and success, have a happy observation, grand observation, and we shall see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we shall be going a little deeper into this micro observatory, how to make the data that we are uh, taking that we are taking from micro observatory in a more presentable format so that people or especially the children learn the nuances or the depths of the object that they are looking at and i dare i and i give a dare to you that observe the moon and try to find out the place where chandrayaan 3 landed try to find out the place where apollo landed try to find out the place where uh, uh, the different uh, astronomers observed in the form of Tycho. And I will give you a very parting, very interesting remark. You get find out the size of the Tycho crater and find out the size of the Tokyo city, roughly diameter. Tokyo fits into Tycho. So this is a reference that I am just giving you. This is how you can make the astronomy more communicative in the manner unimagined before. That is the sole aim of this lunar nights. With these parting comments, Again, repeating the yesterday's message, three-dimensional world perceived in the two dimensions by our eyes with the one dimension of the knowledge. I forward the baton to Bonnie Mam to give the conclusion for the day. And thank you. Thanks a lot for joining us on the second day of Lunar Nights. Over to Bonnie Mam. Hi. Am I, can you hear me? Yes, I think so. Um, I think the important things we've learned today are, well, about the micro-observatory, about taking images, and about the Padlet. From my point of view, the most important piece about learning about the moon is putting your feelings, what you think about the moon, in the Padlet. That can be images, micro-observatory images, 
this is not just about the moon, but about the sky in general. Again, I believe that we all come from the sky and we all go back there after we're dead. So it's very important that we know what up, what's up there and what's it all about. Now the Padlet is a way of our sharing and helping other people find these things. So whether you're doing the moon, the moon and stars, um, the planets, any part of this is very important. I think taking pictures, posting them on the Padlet, and then commenting on the things you see on the Padlet so that your eyes, your brain is letting us know that you're thinking about these things and that they're amazing things. We live in a world where we can see so much of the universe that it's incredible. With the telescopes we have, we can see even more of the universe. But just looking out there with our eyes and taking pictures with our smartphones is absolutely wonderful. Sharing that information helps other people see more than what they're looking at with just their eyes and just their phone. So I think the Padlet is very important because you're sharing your information with others. And I want to say thank you for being here today. I really appreciate all the attention and everything that we've done today. Um, and I guess that's my, those are my closing remarks. Thank you for being here. And I hope you're taking with you three things that you can use today before we start our meetings today, tonight, and tomorrow before we start our meetings tomorrow night. For me, it's morning. I think for everyone else here, it's evening. So take a picture, take an image, draw an image, write a poem, and post it before you go to bed. Thank you very much. So thanks all. See you tomorrow on 3rd of October. It's good night, good day from all of us. Best wishes for the night sky observations. With these words, the team Ice Team signs off. Good day all. Good night.